This is a story of planetary hope, inspired by one of the biggest ideas of the century. This has been something that I've been dreaming about since I was a kid. My whole life, all I wanted to do was be a chef, and I wanted to focus on meat. My training is in biomedical engineering. I was actually a tissue engineer. I took an urban agriculture class that really opened my eyes to what we were doing to the planet just by feeding ourselves. We want to separate the animal from meat making. The division cycle of the cell rather than the reproductive cycle of the animal. And this is a huge, huge paradigm shift. These small tissue samples will produce extremely large amounts of meat. From the consumer perspective, we're facing a brave new world. Technology that was once the stuff of science fiction now becoming a reality. There's a lot of fear around the intersection of food and technology. The manufacturers of lab-grown products should be required to invest in their own market and not ride the coattails of beef's success. Right now is a make or break moment for clean meat. I am signing a letter with the largest meat trade association of the world. Felt like the right thing to do. We are going to bring everybody under this tent. With meat consumption expected to double by 2050, we urgently need solutions. Welcome to the next agricultural revolution. I just want to make sure you're looking at this as a very big historic thing in this world. That is me. Hi everyone, I'm Robbie Lucky, co-founder of PBN. Welcome back to the channel and thank you for joining us on our very first live interview here on YouTube. Hope you enjoy. Animal agriculture now occupies nearly half of the world's land surface, producing more greenhouse gas emissions than all transportation combined. It is the leading driver of species extinction, habitat loss, river acidification, ocean dead zones, and much, much more. If we are to dramatically reduce the impact this industry has and divert the incoming climate crisis, we have got to look at innovative solutions and novel technology to help us reverse the damage and turn back the clock. We are running out of time. We already have powerful solutions like switching to a plant-based diet, which has been shown to dramatically reduce our carbon footprint. This is based on the Oxford study by Joseph Paul. Switching to a plant-based diet reduces food emissions by up to 73%, depending on where you live. Today, we're joined by Liz Marshall, the director, writer, and producer of Meet the Future, which many are saying is a timely documentary focusing on Dr. Uma Valetti, a former Mayo Clinic cardiologist and the visionary CEO of Upside Foods, previously Memphis Meats. Liz is an award-winning Canadian filmmaker who has written, directed, produced, and filmed impactful documentaries around the globe since the 1990s, illuminating significant and timely issues. Liz is best known for her acclaimed feature-length film, The Ghosts in Our Machine. Please give a warm welcome to the channel, Liz Marshall. Welcome, Liz. Hi, Robbie. It's great to be here. Hey, I didn't realize it was your very first uh, YouTube live, so that's great. Thank, thank you. We're christening the channel with your amazing film. Thank you. So before we get started, um, I'd love to learn a little bit more about the inception of this film. Obviously, Meet the Future, we will just watch the trailer. Many are saying that the planet's future may depend on cultivated meat, also known as cell-based meat or cultured meat, um, a food science that grows meat from animal cells without the need to slaughter animals. There are billionaire influencers like Richard Branson, Bill Gates, and food giants Cargill and Tyson, and others have invested in the birth of this new industry, instilling confidence that cultured meat will soon come to market as a sustainable alternative to land-based meat or conventional meat. So tell us a little bit about where you got the idea to create this film and where it all began. Sure. So it's been a six year journey. Um, you know, it was exactly six years ago. So April of 2016, that I started filming Meet the Future. Um, and I was, I had been actively seeking 
a character-driven, uh, solution-focused story that I could hang my hat on. After making the Ghosts in Our Machine and, you know, ushering it around the globe and having such a strong sense of that moral um, uh, emergency around our use of animals uh, en masse, and uh, also myself being an ethical vegan, but also an environmentalist, I was looking for something that could bring all these issues that I care about together. I also deeply care about human rights issues and the future and sustainability. So I was looking for something that could bring all these important, um, you know, timely topics together, but in a story form uh, that would center around something that was unfolding. And um, I was introduced in early 2016 by way of the media to, uh, you know, this incredible meatball that was kind of like, you know, um, it, well, Memphis Meats uh, unveiled the world's first meatball that had been innovated and produced um, without the need to slaughter animals. And um, I wanted to understand more about the innovation and the people behind it. And that's how my how this story began. So when you make a feature length documentary, the most important and the first step is gaining behind the scenes access to the story. And so when I met Dr. Uma Valetti, um, he understood and we clicked um, around the desire to document this as a potential, you know, feature length documentary that could really be a microcosm to explore the birth of an industry. And of course the idea could have just fallen apart because a lot of startups um, don't survive. You know, this is a really big idea and it could have gone by the wayside. Um, but what happened instead is that the story accelerated over time and that's what the film is about. That's amazing. Now, obviously, you've been working on this film, as you mentioned, for six years. It's a very, very long time. How much has the technology uh, changed and evolved over that time? What's been your experience over this, this period? Uh, tremendously. So, you know, when we first started filming, the company, the startup, Memphis Meats, they have now rebranded as Upside Foods. They had literally just moved into their very first research and development facility. So you'll see when you watch the film in the first scene, um, the first section of, of the film, that there's boxes everywhere and they're unpacking and it's this little tiny team of, of scientists and pioneers. Um, working to try to launch something really big. And you wonder, wow, how are they going to get this off the ground? Um, so, you know, the, the science and the innovation was already there because they had already produced the prototype of that meatball. And there's a, a bit of a history to that too. Um, you know, and I'll just quickly say um, a little bit of um, that important history. It goes back to 2013 when Mark Post, who is a scientist um, and researcher and innovator out of um, the Netherlands, he unveiled the world's very first prototype, which was a hamburger, um, a burger, like using cow cells to produce that burger. And there was a lot of media attention around that. And I remember that story in the news, thinking like the light bulb went off for me right away, thinking that has to be the future because meat consumption is on the rise and population growth as well. And, you know, we need a solution um, to this mess that we're in and this problem, this moral issue of what, how we treat animals, how we treat uh, the environment and also human health, like the pandemic that we're in and trying to, you know, find solutions moving forward for a sustainable planet. So, planetary health. So anyway, um, to answer your question more directly, um, a lot of the science, the innovation, the, the um, proof of concept 
had already been established. And it was just a matter of, you know, these scientists tweaking it and perfecting it and, and exploring that. Um, I think where it is right now is the next major hurdle is around scalability, getting it to market. And is this a viable solution in terms of its scalability to, to feed people en masse? Or will it remain a niche product um, that, you know, is not necessarily affordable or accessible? And I think that's really the, the, the big next step. And that would be like a whole other film. Um, but Meet the Future is really um, the film about the birth of the industry. And right now, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see how it unfolds. Mm, absolutely. It's fascinating stuff. Now, Plant-Based News is a vegan platform where we're focused on veganism, we're focused on plant-based living, but we're also focused on ending, ending animal agriculture, helping people understand that animal agriculture, as I already said in the intro, is a leading driver of climate breakdown, river acidification, deforestation, habitat loss. There are so many things that are causing damage to our planet because of animal agriculture. So there's a sense of real urgency to stop this. The world isn't going vegan tomorrow. More than 90% of the planet probably um, eat meat, uh, consider animals necessary for, for life, uh, you know, for, for, for regular life. So convincing more people to switch to plant-based diets is a very a painfully slow process. Many vegans uh, react with anger and resentment towards this technology. And despite the fact that it could end animal agriculture, there is still huge amount of um, resistance to it. Now, I personally believe this type of thing isn't for vegans to consume. A lot of vegans won't consume the flesh of animals or cell-based flesh either. Um, but <laughs> why do you, firstly, it's a two-part question, why do you think so many vegans are against this technology? Um, and how do you think we can convince them that it is a really good thing for the future of our, our planet? I think that, um, I don't know that there's a lot of vegans that are against this. I think there's a lot of vegans that are for this. Um, and I, I, I'd like to say that um, also this movement, you know, the cellular agriculture as a movement, uh, cultivated meat, um, the innovation and, and birth of this industry, there are so many vegans behind the scenes that are actually making this happen um, because they're so motivated ethically, you know, to um, moving the needle forward. Um, and, and um, you know, to the, to the vegans who are skeptical, I think skepticism is healthy, um, but I, I think that that for me as a documentary filmmaker, it's why I make films. I think that Meet the Future is really that vehicle, it's that platform for people to um, learn more and have their minds opened um, and Obviously a film can never answer every question, but it's really meant to spark your imagination, um, foster dialogue and education, um, and really move the conversation forward. Because I think there's a, a lack of understanding about what this is, how it's made, and what the motivation behind it really is. That's why the film is um, character driven character driven storytelling helps to demystify and humanize a big big idea like this which is otherwise kind of like science fiction or abstract or you know not relatable so yeah i think the film serves a major purpose in the world today so Obviously, to improve this technology and move it forward, um, there's going to be a lot of things that need to happen. But there are some barriers to the success of cell-based meat. What are some of the biggest things that are standing out or standing in the way of the uh, the success of this this new industry? I think the there's two enormous hurdles moving forward. One um, is the scalability, as I mentioned um, earlier. Um, the proof of concept is there. There's now over a hundred startup companies around the globe, um, like almost, I think every continent um, around the world is focusing now on getting this to the next level um, with a shared mission around transforming the current 
meat production system away from industrial animal agriculture into a solution that does not require um, you know, all the benefits that, this, that come with this big new idea. Um, so what are those benefits, anticipated benefits? You know, if you don't need to raise and slaughter billions of animals to make meat, if you're making meat outside of an animal, not relying on the animal anymore, you know, then isn't that like one of the greatest ideas of the last century? Isn't that where we need to get to? So for me, you know, I say in my director's statement on the Meet the Future website, I say that, you know, I talk about what motivates me to make this film, but I also say that we don't know the future of what this will be, but I certainly hope that it will get us to where we need to be, which is, you know, a more humane, sustainable world. Um, that's where we want to be. And that's, you know, this is could help us get there. Mm, amazing. Now, one of the most important things uh, about new technology is how we frame it to the consumer, how we talk about it, what we call it. Um, cell-based meat was originally called lab-grown meat. And as time progressed, people obviously moved away from that terminology. Um, how important is it in the process um, of, of kind of helping consumer behavior change how we actually frame or name this technology? Yeah, so it's funny. Nomenclature is actually part of the film. So when you watch Meet the Future you'll see that the language around how to refer to or describe um, what this actually is, it changes over time. And it's really interesting because, you know, for me personally, I had never, you know, made a film about the birth of an industry before making this film. So it goes from, you know, the history around language um, and, and how to understand and describe this goes from you know calling it clean meat to cultured meat to cell based to cell based cell cultured and now it's widely referred to um, as cultivated that's the terminology the next step is to see what will the labels that you know when it's regulated and available on the grocery shelves um, or in the um, in restaurants what will the how will they label it you know, there is a battle, and that this is also in the film, um, around what to call it, um, how to label it, um, because, you know, there's powerful lobby groups, the meat lobby groups, um, ranchers and farmers are not happy with the term meat or beef being used um, to label this product. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see how that unfolds as well. Absolutely. Now, one of the biggest uh, questions that we get is, is it natural? Um, the meat industry certainly <laughs> thinks that it's not natural. Now, I don't know about you, but there's not a lot about human society that is natural. But what is the answer to that? Can, can we consider this um, type of food natural? Uh, I think it's it makes me smile or laugh a little bit, just the irony of that term, because, you know, how meat is made today, 99% of meat that gets to the plate today that people are con meat eaters are consuming. To call that natural is so ill informed. Um, it's not natural, it's totally engineered. It's totally unnatural. Um, the way that animals are bred, raised, slaughtered, um, en masse, you know, I think it's upwards of 70 to 100 billion animals every year around the globe um, that are slaughtered. That doesn't include sea life, which is in the trillions. Um, so natural is a weird word um, and uh, it doesn't make any sense. I think what is natural is human ingenuity to get us out of a mess. So, you know, relying on um, science and innovation and, and, and food technology to steer us out of the mess that we're in, I think that's natural. 
such a good good answer honestly i think there is a real misconception um out there in the world and i think the food industry really really pushes it about what is natural and what isn't so um i think at the end of the day what we want to do is we, people are asking the, the i think the kind of question that people are asking is it healthy um and i think that also takes you down a bit of a rabbit hole as well because you know when I, when people say is vegan meat healthy is cell based meat healthy and i often say compared to what you know health and the food that we eat often comes in a scale so it really depends on a number of factors like process um, of uh, saturated fats um you know various different hormones antibiotics a lot of land based meat or conventional meat is often riddled with bacteria and it can have viruses in it it can have a number of like potentially carcinogenic factors and what's interesting about cell based meat is there'll be there'll be a, an opportunity to reduce certain things like the um the saturated fat levels and potentially make it a lot healthier obviously there's a lot of vegans in the comments and a lot of uh, non-vegans in the comments asking loads of questions so hello everyone thank you for joining us please be polite this is a conversation and a discussion um and if you have a legitimate question you would like to ask us and we can bring it up on the screen please do drop it into the comments and we will get to um, them in a bit but we're going to continue on with some more questions if you're just joining us i'm robbie lockie and this is plant-based news we're live here on youtube and on facebook for the very first time so thank you for joining us again liz so what are some of the most exciting things that you learned about this technology because obviously it's very complex as you say there's a lot to it a lot of people are a bit afraid of it people call it franken meat and it's, it's it's gmo and all these various different words that are quite triggering emotionally for people and there's a lot of fear attached to it but what are some of the most exciting things about the potential for this type of technology? So many exciting things because it's an idea whose time has come and you know it has never been done in the history of of the world and so to be privileged to have followed and witnessed that story over time was just constantly mind-blowing as a as a filmmaker to have that access and to follow something over time as it was, you know, developing and unfolding and the twists and turns for me was just, I was constantly learning and having my mind opened um, to what is possible. And, you know, I think that is the underpinning of the film is we need solutions. We need hopeful um, stories that inspire us. Um, there's a lot of doom and gloom and despair in the world today, you know, whether it's the climate emergency, whether it's, you know, the pandemic, whether it's war raging in, in, around the world in different areas, um, different forms of injustice, you know, the way we treat animals, meat consumption being on the rise, all of these things create anger and despair and also understandably, I, I think sometimes a, a sense of like nihilism, but in fact, there's a lot being done to change and move us forward. And this is one of them. And so that's what motivated me um, to tell this story and to follow it over time and to invest honestly six years of my life to making sure that we had a really solid, credible, feature length documentary, um, which I'm very proud to say has, you know, is narrated by Dr. Jane Goodall. Um, Moby is my exec producer. Um, I've got other amazing executive producers on board. We've got a great team. Um, it's also uh, commissioned, supported by Canada's documentary channel. Um, they also supported my last um, animal rights film, which is called The Ghosts in Our Machine. So. You know, I think it's really the right time to have released this film and I hope everyone can watch it and share it and engage in the conversations, you know, the pros, the cons, everything that you want to talk about with this topic. Use the film as that platform and vehicle to move the conversation forward. Amazing. Yeah, I'm really excited to hear more feedback from the audience. So just pressing on with a few more questions. So one of the aspects of this process is the use of something called bovine fetal serum, which is obviously a liquid that's acquired 
from the uh, birth um, kind of uh, the birth fluid of mother cows. Um, I know that the technology has moved on a lot, but the, the, I believe that it is still part of the process in some um, companies. Obviously, this means that the product itself, you know, isn't vegan because of it involves the the killing or the um, the use of of animals in some way on an ongoing basis. But how far are we from having that product completely removed from the industry and cell based meat being completely free from animal exploitation, essentially? Yeah, no, it's a very important part of making this credible um, is to remove fetal bovine serum from the production uh, process. Amazingly, you know, and it's mentioned in the film, it's referenced a couple of very significant times. Um, and and um, I don't, I think it was just three months ago, um, Upside Foods, which is the startup company that the film follows over time, um, they made a major public announcement that they have now been able to officially use um, a plant-based, so no animal-derived um, ingredients whatsoever in their production process from beginning to end. So it's always been part of the mission and the innovation to get the, the industry to that place. And, and um, yeah, so... Like I said earlier um, in this interview, the next major hurdle for this product to, you know, get to market and, you know, to um, be available on mass is its scalability. Can it be scaled up at a significant um, level to be affordable and accessible, um, available to meat eaters? you know, and that's the next big hurdle. Amazing. Um, bringing up one of the questions from someone on YouTube, Anna Berry says, exactly how is the original cell culture derived from the animal? Because I think this is really one of the biggest concerns, particularly for vegans, is are the animals where these cells are acquired, are they hurt and harmed in any way? Um, and that's something that, that we're asked almost in every article and every post when this discussion is ever mentioned. Yeah, so you'll see that in the in the film as well. Like within the first act, we follow the the process step by step. And so step number one is understanding, like, you know, where do these cells come from? And you see in this biopsy, which is like tiny, that there are billions of cells within that biopsy, within that um, stem cell extraction, and from there, they can make a huge amount of meat from that one sample. So it's a biological sample that is taken in a painless way from a healthy animal. Uh, we, we didn't film the biopsy being taken from the animal. So, you know, that's not part of the story, but um, it's not very harmful, I would say, you know, when you compare that to conventional methods of how animals are bred, how they're raised and how they're slaughtered um, en masse mm. for food production every year, it's really far less harm. Absolutely. When you, if you spend any time in a slaughterhouse or a factory farm, you'll see real suffering and you'll see real exploitation of animals. Uh, as you say, billions and billions and billions of animals every year are uh, killed for human consumption and, and in some of the most horrific ways possible. So this is, you know, for those that wish to continue to consume meat for, for cats and, and wild animals that we are, you know, caring for, you know, this is, is a fantastic solution. Um, I think, you know, people always see this technology uh, on, on PBN and, and kind of make the assumption that we are recommending they eat it or consume it. You know, what Complex News is really trying to focus on the story at hand, which is really tracking the, the course of this technology, which I truly believe will bring an end to animal agriculture as we know it, but it has to be able to reach the market. Now, the market is obviously uh, <laughs> a big part of the conversation because at the end of the day, money makes the world go round. And uh, in the beginning of this process, cell-based meat was incredibly expensive per pound. 
But um, where are we sitting at today with regards to the cost of uh, this um, this meet? Yeah, so when we first started filming um, in 2016, it cost $18,000 a pound uh, to make that little meatball that could change the world. And today um, it's far less than $50 a pound. Um, so I wasn't gonna tell you that because I want you to watch the film, but I am sort of giving that away. Um, so the goal is of these companies is to uh, bring that down much further so that it's either on par or less expensive than conventional uh, meat. Amazing. Well, it's really exciting that things have changed so rapidly over such a short period of time. A um, few, fi few final questions before we go to the audience. Um, the film is quite science heavy and, and somewhat academic in, in in the way it's sort of put together in the sense that there's obviously a lot of industry people, a lot of scientists, a lot of people who've talked about the complexities of this technology. Is there ever ever a concern that sometimes the reason sometimes these technologies struggle to get through to the public is that the people talking about them are often from a very science heavy background and not a marketing or advertising background. So the positioning of this technology to the public is often, you know, so far out there that people just see it as something like science fiction. Yeah, definitely. It was, um, so I'm speaking as a storyteller. That's what I do. I'm a writer, director, producer of documentary films. And what was really important to me in terms of my own um, way into this big idea, this big topic, was to ground it in a human story that I could follow over time. And I chose well, um, because Dr. Uma Valetti is a really interesting uh, protagonist. Um, he is someone that becomes relatable and um, he's humble and he's got this really big idea and he's trying to achieve this end goal that at first just seems so insurmountable and, 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 and challenging and difficult. But what ends up happening is you see this acceleration, you see him rise as a uh, pioneer, a CEO, you know, like within like a year and a half of filming, he's on the front cover of Inc. magazine as, you know, this leader um, in the field. And that just continues. And so it's a, it's a story. It's a story about pioneers, about his team as well. Now, why is it about one company and not about all the other companies. So Memphis Meats was the first company in the space that really in a laser focused kind of way committed themselves to the commercial viability of this food technology. And we got in really, really early to get that special access to follow the story as a microcosm to represent all the other little startup stories around the globe that have since proliferated. Um, as I said earlier, there is a history to this um, food science and technology. So it doesn't begin with Memphis Meats, but Memphis Meats is really like an entry point around how this journey begins in terms of it being an industry that is viable. And so, you know, in hanging my hat as early as 2016 on this one little startup story i'm just so grateful because it like just last week they announced another um round their series c they just raised another huge amount of money towards getting to their goal so they raised 400 million this time um and you know they're like getting their huge production facility off the ground because they're getting ready to bring this to market. So it's very timely. And I hope you, everyone like listening to this interview and engaging in this conversation, you don't need to agree, but watch the film and, you know, continue researching and learning because this is not a question of if it's a question of when and it is the future. I hope it's the future because, as we said, meat consumption is on the rise. Not everyone is going vegan and vegetarian. Um, yeah, so we need these viable solutions. 
Amazing. Thank you so much, Liz. Well, let's, we've got time for a couple of questions from the audience. Um, there's one here about energy production. I'm not sure if we'll be able to answer it, but we'll give it a go. It's from Peter Marshall on YouTube. And Peter says, how much energy is required per kg? Are there different chemical inputs? What are the waste products? Is the process per kg actually environmentally better than factory farming? So um, I know what the answer is, but what do you think, Liz? Yeah, I'm not an expert on these things. Great, great, um, important, like nuanced, detailed questions. But what I can say is that in terms of CO2 emissions, um, the whole vision for this industry is to dovetail with the green energy um, movement and industry as well. So, you know, and to be very environmental around, you know, water recapture and, you know, because this is not about um, the conventional way of, you know, um, producing meat, which requires, by the way, in that conventional sense, what you said at the beginning, Robbie, almost 50%, so half of the world's land surface area is used for animal agriculture. The amount of, the amount of deforestation, biodiversity loss, water and land use, that is a major problem. This could be a major solution to that. So in terms of greenhouse gas emissions, um, it doesn't produce any. There's no greenhouse gas emissions in the production of meat grown from animal cells. Mm. The process, and I think a lot of people have asked me to simplify it for them. And I'm again, I'm not an expert on this subject. I've obviously read a lot, I interviewed a lot of people on it, uh, is, is, is closer to the, the process of brewing beer. Uh, and it's a fermentation process and you know cells are put into a reactor where they they proliferate cells whether they're plant cells or human cells have structural differences but cells behave in very similar ways whether they are plants or uh, mammalian cells so you know this is a powerful technology which uses uh, <laughs> billions of year old technology and you know a, a natural technology we've learned to harness the power of the cell and i think you know like any other revolution the technological revolution the information revolution the cell revolution or cell based revolution is an opportunity for humanity to turn back the clock and reverse some of the damage that we have done to this planet because of animal agriculture as i said in the intro more than half of the planet is being eviscerated by animal agriculture and that's to put it lightly you know species extinction habitat loss deforestation river acidification ocean dead zones there is so much damage being done to our planet because of humanity's desire for cheap meat. We have upset the balance so essential to life on this planet because of our desire to consume meat. So we have two options. We can either switch the entire planet to a plant-based economy. Now, that's not happening anytime soon. Or we can move towards a technology that allows us to have meat that is this healthier type of meat. It is a fraction of the environmental footprint and it will hopefully, as you say, be have a price parity. So it should be cheap or cheaper than regular meat. Um, obviously, you know, if you're vegan, you don't want to eat meat. No one's going to force you to eat it. But <laughs> this technology no. could bring an end to animal agriculture. And as vegans, we want to see an end to the exploitation and the suffering of billions of sentient beings. So if anyone listening who's unsure about this, I implore you to please learn about this technology, watch this film and support this technology. You don't have to eat it yourself. Maybe you might feed it to your companion cat or feed it to your the lions you might look after in a sanctuary. Um, but this technology will really uh, revolutionize the future of the food system. That's what I believe. So um, yeah, let's, let's all work together to try and re reduce the amount of harm and suffering that happens on this planet because of our food choices as people. So where can people watch the documentary, Liz? Okay. So um, meet the future, M-E-A-T, the future, meetthefuture.com is our hub, our website where you can learn everything about how to watch the film um, on streaming platforms like Apple TV and others um, in select territories around the globe. Um, so check it out. It's definitely available now in the UK. I know that, that, that Robbie, you're from the UK. Um, and in the US and a, a whole bunch of other uh, territories. Um, and we're still working with um, the team to get this into other territories around the globe coming soon. So parts of Asia are releasing the film 
um, in the summer and fall. So that will be exciting as well. Um, also on our website, um, there are there's a discussion guide and an educational guide. So please use our website as um, a portal for learning more. Um, it, it also, um, what else can I tell you? Watch our trailer, share our trailer, um, follow us on social media because um, you know we are really active right now on social media as part of an Earth Month campaign, um, making the equation that you know this is a climate solution. So that yeah, that's it. Thank you so much, Liz. We'll watch the trailer before we let everybody go. But thank you so much for joining us on PBN. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thanks again. See you next time, everyone. I've been your host, Robbie Lockie, and this is PBN Live on YouTube. We're going to watch the trailer one more time. Please leave your comments. And if you enjoyed this live, please don't forget to comment, like, and share. And as always, have a lovely day. Look after yourself. Eat your veggies, drink your water, and uh, be safe. This is the story of planetary hope, inspired by one of the biggest ideas of the century. This has been something that I've been dreaming about since I was a kid. My whole life, all I wanted to do was be a chef, and I wanted to focus on meat. My training is in biomedical engineering. I was actually a tissue engineer. I took an urban agriculture class that really opened my eyes to what we were doing to the planet just by feeding ourselves. We want to separate the animal from meat making. The division cycle of the cell rather than the reproductive cycle of the animal. This is a huge, huge paradigm shift. These small tissue samples will produce extremely large amounts of meat. From the consumer perspective, we're facing a brave new world. Technology that was once the stuff of science fiction now becoming a reality. There's a lot of fear around the intersection of food and technology. The manufacturers of lab-grown products should be required to invest in their own market and not ride the coattails of beef's success. Right now is a make or break moment for clean meat. I am signing a letter with the largest meat trade association in the world. Felt like the right thing to do. We are going to bring everybody under this tent. With meat consumption expected to double by 2050, we urgently need solutions. Welcome to the next agricultural revolution. I just want to make sure you're looking at this as a very big historic thing in this world. That is neat.